up, guys? That is Vision One here, and welcome back to another episode of the Three Way Dance. And of course, you can't have the Three Way Dance without the three people. So, joining me as always is Shelby, aka Shubs. Hey, yo. And as always, is with me is Nick. Hey, hey, hey. All right, and we got. Mm, sorry, I had to take a drink there already. And we got a loaded show for you tonight. We're going to talk about, of course, the big topic this week, uh, the the recent WWE firings. We're going, to, we're going to play our favorite game. They came from eBay. Plus, we're going to book the ultimate um, NXT TakeOver, which uh, uh, I pretty much left Sh- uh, Shelby and Nick in the dark on how we're doing that until recently, which they're kind of still in the dark a little bit, but we'll get there. Uh, so... Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to do the news cycle a little differently here today. Normally, I pick out some news articles, but since there were 10, um, 10 firings in all from WWE recently, we're going to focus our attention on that. And uh, let's go ahead and throw out some names here. See what we say here. So the first name, let's throw out. I think the biggest name of them all here is going to be uh, Mojo Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, biggest name. <laughs> he shouldn't have answered his phone that day. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, on, I'm, you know, let's be honest. Mojo Rawley only lasts as long as he did because Rob Gronkowski got signed to WWE. That pretty much extended his life. And then once yep. Rob was just like, yeah, I'm going to go play football again. You know, a part of Mojo was just like, fuck. Yep. <laughs> yeah, for Damn, sure. They're not going to do anything with me again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's exactly what they did. Because after Rob Gronkowski left, how many Mojo matches, uh, you know, were there? He might was have had one he... where he lost to Mustafa Ali. Mustafa. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> since Mojo Raleigh's now gone, I got to ask you guys: top three favorite Mojo Raleigh matches? Go. <laughs> <laughs> and they went quiet on me. Okay. Yep. All right, so Mojo Raleigh no longer with uh, WWE, which that one came later in the day. Uh, out of all the names, that one came like late in the evening uh, there. So I guess they were debating on that one. They're like, should we get rid of Mojo? Should we not? I'm sure that was a real conversation in the office. <laughs> oh, what's wrong? Okay, something's happening with Shelby at the moment. We'll figure it out here in a minute. Um, and okay, coming up next here is the, what, which name do we have here now? Let's go with, uh, Wesley Blake. Wesley Blake was let go. Uh, two thirds of the, the forgotten sons are now, uh, out of WWE. So Nick, it's just so unfortunate how that happened because you have Blake, who out of the three of them had actually the most kind of relevance, having had an NXT tag title run. And then Steve Cutler, he gets fired, and he's the first one to get fired, and that was because he gets COVID. And then Blake gets fired. But yet Jackson Reich, the one that caused the Forgotten Sons to lose their push, lose their spot, lose their stable, still has a job and a prominent role on raw smackdown no rikers on raw oh my bad i thought you meant i thought you meant like lose their prominent role on smackdown my bad sorry oh but like i'm honestly once i saw wesley blake's name i was like damn it they're gonna get rid of murphy but uh his name did not show up in the uh the fire and tears so uh again i asked both of you here uh top three wesley blake matches go um, the one that he did the move and then won the match, which was no. done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. All right, and next up here, which uh, you know, a, a lot. I think you guys are going to disagree with me on, but I think this is an unfortunate loss, and no, no joke. I, I think this is an unfortunate loss for them because I think they could have did something to rectify this. But uh, Tucker of uh, the other half of Heavy Machinery, no longer with WWE. I, you know, I think it could have been an easy fix. Put them back together with Otis. You know, maybe kind of bring Tucker over to SmackDown, and you know, kind of like getting Chad Gable's head. Like, hey, you're manipulating my boy here. You know, and then 
kind of work on getting heavy machinery back together. But instead, they, um, from what it sounds like, Tucker had some issues with upper, upper management. So that could have what led to his downfall. Yeah. Uh, I think it would have been. I mean, they should have just put him back together with Tucker. You're right. Like, you oh, know, sure. I think he was he was capable of a lot more than they ever really gave him a chance. But if mm-hmm. they weren't going to do anything with him, you might as well put him in that tag team. Exactly. You know, at least it would have been like a little storyline for him. He could have went over to Smack, like I said, went over to SmackDown. Could have got on Chad Gable. Like, why are you getting all in my boy's head and everything? Like, and you know, he could have played the advocate card or whatever. You know, just like, oh, I'm not in your boy's head. He's here on his own volition and stuff like that. And then, you know, they could have worked with that. I think. To, yeah. to build on that, if they if they had have done something like that, they could have even had Otis like stand in the middle of the two being like, and Gabe will be like, "Oh, don't you remember he turned on you?" And then it goes to Tucker, and he has a ham, and then it's just like it keeps <laughs> going back and forth. They could have really worked with that. Yeah, you know, Do you know, maybe Tucker give like some heartfelt apology as you know, I turned on you. That was my bad, and you know, he mm-hmm. brings Mandy back to SmackDown. Like, there we go. <laughs> I think it could have worked, but I, I think it's unfortunate that they lost Tucker. But believe it or not, Tucker, two-time champion in WWE, whereas Otis has done nothing yet, except lose yep. money in the bank. Yep. <sighs> All right, and let's see the next next name here. Uh, let's go with uh, Mickey James. Mickey James no longer with WWE, which I think uh, uh, bad move. I yeah I yeah because if anything, she could have gone back to the NXT and had a little bit more depth. Well, not even NXT. They wouldn't even put her on Raw or SmackDown. Well, I mean, yeah, for a while right. they had her just like, um, you know, I, I never heard her announcing, but they had her announcing on main event, which I'm just oh. like, okay. But yeah. then they classified her as a legend. They kind of pulled in Alicia Fox on her. Yep. But Alicia Fox, they had a good reason, you know, because she was kind of fighting that alcoholism for a while, mm-hmm. which thankfully, from what I heard, she's clean. Yeah. Um, But, you know, one day Alicia Fox is working there, and one day they're like, you're a legend now. She's like, what? Uh, but Mickey James, She's poor you know, and one with flair, like yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> but now, so much job. But now, Mickey James is all of a sudden on Legend Night. She's a legend. Shows up in the Royal Rumble for like what three minutes, and then that's it. They don't do anything else with her. And from yeah. what I've read, you know, they let her go because of her desire to continue wrestling. Which, you know, we talked about this in our group chat. You know, they let basically let her go because she wanted to do her job, which I'm just like, huh. Yep. Gee, great. Okay. Top three Mickey James matches. That's her. Okay. So, <laughs> so we actually had a top three there. Okay. Unlike for Wesley Blake and Mojo Rawley. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually capable of coming up with three matches she had at least. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And uh who who am I missing this far? Because I got Mojo. You're missing a very big one and a secondary. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. I, I'm saving the, the main three for last year. So Mojo, Mickey, Bo uh, Dallas. Tw- Bo Dallas, thank you. Bo Dallas, uh, what do we think I about feel Bo Dallas? I so bad for Bo Dallas, because, like, really? months ago, I heard that he was preparing himself for a career in realty, and I, when I read that, it was like, a, you know, his he, he was so big in NXT, and then they brought yeah. him up, and, you know, they didn't really do a whole lot with him until The Miz came along, and they did that thing, and it was kind of okay, and then him and uh axel went off and and did the whole b team thing and when b team started it was actually like pretty good they had that yeah they actually got over i'm actually surprised i got over like it did yeah Yeah, it did and then they made them a joke and then ever since then they never recovered and it was like bo dallas is preparing for a career in realty real being a realtor because his dreams of being a professional wrestler were crushed. And it's like, oh my God, what a depressing story. He just hey, knew I mean, it was coming. I, like, 
he might have known it was coming, but at least he's not his brother dressed in a clown mask playing with puppets yeah, and losing because properly, some right. chick with black goo coming out of her face caused him to lose a match at WrestleMania that he should have won. And now that chick has her own puppet. Uh, yeah, I heard. Uh, <laughs> now we have Lily. Great. Yeah. Yay, Pretty let's cool. release the puppet. But uh, Bo Dallas apparently has like a farm and everything too. He has like a ranch, and apparently he—I don't know if he's married to her or dating her—but apparently he's with Liv Morgan. That was news yep. to me. Oh, really? Yeah, that was news to me. I didn't yeah. know that either. All right, so Blake well, Mojo. Real is what he wanted to do. Yeah, that. Yeah, that I knew. So Blake Mojo, Mickey Tucker, Bo Dallas. I'm going to save the big three for last. Who am I missing? Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green. Uh, that one kind of surprised me, but I think I have a theory on why they let her go because there was an issue a With couple Zach months Ryder. ago. Well, not even that. No, that's not it. I think there was an issue a couple months ago where apparently she didn't sign the paperwork to copyright her name. Oh, so really? I have a feeling that could be a factor. And then the the funny PS today story is is that she today she just recently filed the paperwork to trademark her name. Yep. <laughs> so she probably had it planned. She was probably on her way. Because she she said her SmackDown debut was a mess. Uh, apparently, also there was plans for a Pussycat Dolls meets Charlie's Angel stable with Chelsea okay. Green, Santana what? Garrett, y- yeah, and Chelsea Bourne. Green and Vanessa Bourne. Which, man, I, I mean, you don't even see her that much, but Santana Garrett is in the poor bastard club because, like, every time I see her, I just say, "Poor Santana Garrett." Yeah, you know. Um, but I, I. I Chelsea Green was one that shocked me that was let go. Not so much in shock as to I thought they were going to do much, much more. Oh, yeah. Well, I think they they, they had that original plan until she broke her wrist. Oh, right, yeah. You know? And I believe I'm missing one more. I should have wrote the list down. At least still. Oh, Callisto. That's right. That one. Uh, that's another one. I wouldn't say shocking because usually when they when they don't use you for quite a while and then you get released, you know, it's kind of like should have saw it coming. But like, it's a, he, he's another guy that like you know, WWE is always you always read those stories about WWE trying to find the next Mysterio, the next Rey Mysterio, somebody that they can bank on the Hispanic audience and they yep. failed a couple times with, you know, Sin Cara, Del Rio. Um, I'm missing another name here, but those two for sure. But Kalisto. like, it, maybe that's it, but I think, Kalisto, I think Kalisto could have been their guy. <sighs> I think, nah. I think cause they gave I'm, him a U.S. title run. They gave him, Shots at that. They gave him chance after chance. They was in the uh, Lucha Dragons. He was in Lucha he House Party. Lucha they, things. They tried a lot of different <laughs> things with Kalisto. I still think there there was there was still time to save him. <sighs> I was never a big fan of him. When they know. split him from Lucha House Party, I thought it was only a matter of time. Like when they tried doing the heel turn with him and Lucha House Party, that I'll admit I didn't like that. I, that I felt was a really big misstep. And that when like they tried, do y'all remember when Kalisto had like the heavy metal theme music? No, no. Yeah, thank God. Um, look that up if you can. It, it was yeah. it was a weird thing. It was like right after he. Uh, I think it was like right after he lost the United States title and he moved to Raw, and that's was when, that when like, Braun was throwing him around. Exactly, yeah. That, then it was about that time. It, it, his music was a little different. It, it still had the lucha thing in it, but like it was like lucha, lucha. But then it had like this like heavy metal beat to it. It, it was god awful. Um, but I, I, I just I I think they could have did something with him. I just think he he could have been that next Mysterio they were looking for. 
you know. Yeah, he could have um, been. I agree, but they just botched it. Like I think they had, yeah, because you know, call me crazy here, but go look at his match with uh, Ryback at WrestleMania. I mean, he he pulled a good match there. Hell even the Ryback. Rematch, even the rematch he had with Ryback, I thought was pretty solid. You know, <laughs> Kalisto can go. I like Kalisto. I always like. All right, and the next names here are probably the three names that people are really flipping shit about, and probably F- Mickey too. People are kind of flipping their shit about Mickey, but these three are the the main ones people are flipping their shit about here. Both the iconics, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, uh, both let go uh, from the WWE, which uh, yeah, I'm not happy. No, oh, dumb. They dumb let go of Billy Kay. <laughs> The the woman that I've said numerous times that we need to genetically figure out how to plant a field of. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they should have never broke them up. Should have never I, broke them up. They yeah. they should have never. It, oh. <sighs> and I mentioned this in the group chat, but according to reports, uh, Kevin Dunn, executive producer of WWE. Uh, in his words, just did not get Billy Kay. Well, see, I don't. I, I don't get. <laughs> I just don't <laughs> get what uh, what the character was supposed to be. Billy <laughs> Kay. We just need to <laughs> fire the bolts. Bolts. Which bolt? The other one. The other one that followed her around. <laughs> and fuck Kevin Dunn. <laughs> I, I, I don't get They that. could have fired him and saved all 10 of those talents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're probably paying him more, twice as much as they're paying all 10 of those What people. do they even need him for? They've got, they've got the deal with NBC. I'm sure they can get somebody that has plenty more experience well, from NBC to hook up to the production truck. We all know part of the reason he has a job. <sighs> but when Vince dies, He's gonna lose his job. Let's face it. The only... I don't think so. Look, Vince will have that in his will that he keeps his job, hundred no. percent, until the day he dies or decides to quit. And I don't think he's gonna quit. He's probably got to put it pretty cushy. And I don't know if I'd want. Why to hasn't done. he fixed his teeth? <laughs> I mean, have you seen a picture of him? I don't because I've to. only seen like one, and it's from like the nineties. It would maybe he has reported. fixed it. It would have been reported if he fixed his teeth. Maybe. It would be known because I feel like Pritchard would have told somebody to tell Cornette that Kevin Dunn fixed his teeth. <laughs> Pritchard just calls Cornette. <laughs> hey, Jim, just wanted to let you know, Kevin fixed his teeth. <laughs> fuck? <laughs> well, now how am I supposed to... What the fuck to- are you talking about? He fixed his teeth. No, I can't call Bucky Beaver fucking teeth. Fuck. (laughs) No, I can't call Bucky Beaver no more. Motherfucker. (laughs) Anyways, Kevin Dunn didn't get released, so. (laughs) So, yeah, we swung far away from Billy Kay and Peyton Royce here. Um, Yeah. But, uh,. I, what would astound me most about it had been one thing if Billy Kay wasn't used on television for months and then they decided to release her and shit. But the fact that they made these releases on what was it last Wednesday? <clears throat> Something like that. Something like that. And she was just she was on <laughs> WrestleMania like that Saturday. Yeah. You know? And also has a pin, a quote unquote, pinfall victory at WrestleMania. On top of that, she, you know, she pinned uh, Naomi. Was it? Yeah, that's right. Was she the only one on this list that actually had a match at WrestleMania? I believe so. Yeah. Yep. Looking at it. Yep. Yeah, that seems weird. Yep. But I mean, if they didn't have that tag team turmoil match she wouldn't have had a match like if they just had one of those tag teams face another tag team i don't think that her tag team would have been in that match no. team titties and shannon basler and Nia Jax. boom <laughs> <laughs> there you go but the funny thing is, you know and what's really funny about peyton royce being let go is that when they split that team up what was said is that vince thought she was going to be the breakout star and She's the one that got genetted. Yeah, well, she wasn't the funny one. 
That's true. Right. Too. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, they tried was, making. They also tried making. Okay. But they also tried making her a comic foil when they threw her in that tag team with Lacey Evans. Oh. It, just, it, it just wasn't that funny. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I love me some Lacey Evans and I'll defend her, but oh, yeah, throwing her in that tag you. team, you nasty fuck. Um, <laughs> this is a classy show. Yeah, very yeah. classy. <laughs> uh, but the when they threw in that tag team. Called fuck Jordan. <laughs> You know, he actually asked a question that was actually quite funny this week. I saw so, that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, see, if you ask more shit like this and not be a dick, maybe we'll, you know. Anyway. Uh, no, I forgot what the fuck I was saying. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, uh, I'll defend Lacey Evans and shit, but, like, the comic foil of her and Lacey just did not work. I think there was only, like, one bit that I saw her and Lacey do where I was like, that's actually pretty funny. But other than that, I was like, yeah, this this team's not working for me, bro. Yeah, no. Because yeah. I was just like, the only thing that was working for me with Billy Kay was like when she was trying to get into the Riot Squad. That shit was fucking funny. But like yeah. throwing Royce and Lacey together, I'm just like, then why don't you just keep the fucking Iconics together? Yeah. Yeah. You know, at least like with Kay trying to get into the Riot Squad, it was like entertaining. Yep. You know? All right. And the final name who was at WrestleMania but didn't compete in a match. But uh, he was there at WrestleMania on Sunday, and then was let go that Wednesday. Is Samoa Joe, which is which is one that uh, probably made the most noise out of all these, next to Mojo Rawley. Um Most underutilized on this whole thing, in my opinion, for what he's capable of. He could have right. he could have beat Lesnar. He could have been world champ by now, and they never gave it to him. And well, he did, get a little, he did get a little this. injury prone there towards the end. He did, and, and I think I heard something about him having concussion issues. Yeah. And I guess that's probably why they let him go. He probably wanted to wrestle, but they didn't want to. That's take... what it was. Uh, apparently, yeah, like Mickey James, he had a desire to do his job. Yeah. Well, but that's it's different with Joe, though, because they, they want to protect Joe, and they don't want to take that kind of ownership on that, right? Like, that's a lot of liability. I've been kind of back and forth on Joe, and the reason is is because, to begin with, when he was brought in to NXT, he was never supposed to go to the main roster. It was always supposed to be an NXT-exclusive deal, but then when his merch sold out within minutes, and they they, they didn't even have enough made to keep up with the demand for it, that's when they reworked Heal so that yeah. he would eventually go to the main roster. So, I mean, <sighs> I'm torn because he did have a good NXT run, and then the main yeah. roster just there was the up he didn't have a bad run on the main home. roster, it just didn't turn into what it should have. Yeah, like he had good matches and such with people on the yeah. roster. Like, yeah, good matches with uh AJ Styles, of course. Him and AJ yeah. Styles always tear it up, and the feud was very good though. Especially like their pay per view matches. Like, what was the one they had at like SummerSlam or something that ended with uh, Joe? Was it Joe on the mic or it had a really weird finish? I remember. It was a SmackDown. No, it was it was SummerSlam. I remember that because they they did the Night Night AJ thing and that was phenomenal. No pun intended, but there was some kind of SummerSlam angle where like oh, I remember like halfway through the match they got on the mic and they started talking and stuff. I don't remember, but. Their their matches. Yeah, I, I do remember the build up for that, but I can't I can't recall the paper. I want to say Extreme Rules for some reason, but I think that's wrong. It could be. It could have been Extreme Rules. But yeah, I mean, Lesnar to the limit in that uh, Great Balls of Fire uh, match, the one at Great Balls of Fire, and like the first five minutes of that, Joe just beat the piss out of Brock Lesnar. Like that was incredible. <clears throat> All right, and that is. All the uh, the the firings from the Black Black Wednesday, um, which Black ironically, a oh, Black Thursday. I'm sorry, it was a Thursday, which ironically came exactly 365 days to the date from the last uh, group of firings from when you know Eric Rowan and uh, Leo Rush and all those guys were let go exactly one year to the date. Um, so I think the guy. I think if we had to pick one that we're going to miss the most, I think uh, I think we're all in agreement that it's going to be Mojo Raleigh, right? <laughs> oh, for 
Sure. <sighs> I remember that match that he had with that guy where he did the move and then <laughs> won. That's Wesley Blake. <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'm gonna miss Billy Kay, man. I swear, man. I swear, man. Her body is just. Be... Oh God, we got to figure out a way to plant a field of fucking Billy Kays. Okay, so I think the real question is who's who's in catering now, though, because there can't be many left. Titus O'Neil. Well, there'll be a new batch. <sighs> Titus O'Neil, Akira Tozawa, Lince uh, Dorado. Lindsay Dorado sadly is back there, which I love. I love Lindsay Dorado and Grand Metal League. They are phenomenal. Riddick Moss. Yeah, yeah Riddick Moss is back there. Um, I feel it? like Elias is starting to make regular appearances. Yeah. It'd just be Kofi <laughs> Kingston. <laughs> oh, yeah. I they gave him that win. You know how they usually do. We're like, uh, like Heath Slater. Heath Slater once penned Seth Rollins. What happened after that? And when it took oh, his yeah, right back right. catering to his crayons. <laughs> yeah. But no blue. Good. No blue. They were out of blue that day. All right. <laughs> and uh, I do want to touch on this since I wrote it down. Uh, it looks like Slapjack and Reckoning from the former Retribution look like they might be headed to SmackDown. So uh, I guess uh, in about another year, we'll be seeing Slapjack, at least, on this list of uh, being fired. Yep. Yep. I feel so bad for Shane Thorne, though, because, like, he, he's trying so hard to make it without uh, the other guy Nick from Miller. TM. What's his name? Nick Miller. Nick Miller. He's trying so hard to make it without him, and he just can't get anything going. He tried doing it singles, couldn't do it. And then he got that tag team with Brandon Vink. It looked like it was going to go somewhere. And then Vink but, quit. Yeah. Oh, did he quit? Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I thought he was just in NXT. Oh, okay. Nope. Um, so then he got the retribution thing, which looked like it was, they were going to do something with it. And now that's done. So now it looks like they're shipping him off to SmackDown. Uh, Reckoning, Mia Yim, a.k.a. Mia Yim, they, they could do something with Mia Yim. Um, Hopefully, because yeah. the women's roster is losing some depth here. We, we've we lost three to firings. We have Becky, Becky Lynch on the side here. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, what is it, L Lacey Evans on the side, Becky Lynch on the side. Also, um, Ronda. Ronda, well, nah, who cares if she comes back or not? Yeah, fuck Ronda Rousey. You know? Yeah. So... All right, all right. So that was the news this week. Uh, now it's time to play our favorite game, and that is it came from eBay here. And uh, I went ahead last week and I wrote down a, a shit ton of items uh, from there, so I'd be a little bit more prepared here. So <laughs> we will start with uh, a unique one here. It is from the old WWF New York restaurant here. Ooh. Oh wow. Yeah, so it is a WWF New York wing bucket. This was a bucket they gave you, apparently, to put wings in, obviously. Uh, so it's just an empty WWF New York wing bucket. Uh, it has the WWF New York logo on there and such. How much is the WWF New York wing bucket going for, Nick? 12 bucks. Shelby? 30 Uh... 12 35 Shelby, you got it. It is actually 24.97. Nice. Gross. You're actually closer to <laughs> Wait, hold on. Is this bucket used? Uh, did not say. Uh, I would gross. assume it is. Uh, I, I would Obviously assume it is, you know. It's just whether it has wing sauce from when WWF Barbecue New York was well, I, still I, I'm 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 sure it's washed out by now. <laughs> you would think <laughs> hey, why uh, do you think one... they didn't list the condition? Oh, no, that's true. <laughs> this one is unique. I found this one really unique. Usually, WWE has soundtracks, you know, for their wrestlers. You know, you get you get the WWE CD and has like you know certain. Yeah, you know they have that, but this is unique. This is a New Japan Pro Wrestling CD soundtrack, but it's not just of different themes of New Japan Pro Wrestling stars. It is just a New Japan Pro Wrestling CD soundtrack of just Jushin Thunder Liger. It's a soundtrack. Really? It's a soundtrack of one dude. So, so it's just one song. No, there's a whole fucking CD. Really? So how much 
is the Jushin Thunder Liger New Japan Pro Wrestling CD soundtrack going for Shelby? So it's it's a it's multiple songs. Are they yeah. like different theme songs that he used over his tenure with New Japan? It 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 didn't say multiple theme songs. It's just a soundtrack for the wrestler. Imagine like a movie soundtrack. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Um, sixty dollars. Sixty dollars, Nick. Thirty bucks. I can't imagine the value on that's too high. Like, well, Nick, you are you are right because it is only thirty five dollars. Yeah, I, I yeah, thirty five dollars. All right. So hey, for the first time ever, I think you two are tied in this game. I think we tied the first game, first time too. But Did you? Did you tie the first Nick game? Nick usually wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the last one here, of course, we gotta we gotta reach deep. We gotta we gotta pull out a, an obscure one here. The and ass blaster. The ass blaster. <laughs> um, I'm debating between these two here. I'm gonna yeah, you know what? Let's go with this. Uh, let's go with this. The Godfather, everybody's favorite pimp here. The Godfather yeah. signed. Uh, the Godfather signed neon green vest. Worn ring worn oh, wow. godfather neon green vest. How much is this going for on eBay, Nick? Two thousand. Two thousand. Shelby, how much is the godfather sign neon green vest going for on eBay? Uh fifteen hundred. Uh, and Shelby, you win your first game because no, it is it is only going for only eight hundred dollars. That was going to be my first guess. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's only going for eight hundred dollars. Um, which yeah, I thought that was a little low myself. I was like, only eight hundred. Wow. Okay. Yeah, especially since All right. Design. So let me just—I uh, forgot my little card upstairs with the original things on. So let me just write this down real quick as we set up for. Booking the ultimate NXT uh, takeover here because that's what we're going to do. I kind of got this idea from um, uh, watching it on WWE's live stream a couple weeks back. Um, So I am hoping that we can go through what I wrote down because I wrote. No, fuck your show. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. Uh huh. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on. Um, somebody fill the dead air, please. Um, never mind. I got it. <laughs> oh, great! Y'all are great at podcasting. Wow, I picked some great people. This uh, is literally our fifth show. <laughs> I know, and y'all should be in the groove now, man. Oh. Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. All right, we have to fill the ultimate NXT takeover card. Okay, uh, we're going to have six matches, and I'm gonna tell you what those six matches are here in just a minute. Um, we need uh, anybody who's ever competed on at least two or more takeovers. Sorry, no CJ Parker. He was on two actually. So ha. Damn it. That's the only reason I instigated that rule is because you were so, like, inclined to want to use C.J. Parker for some fuck reason. I was going to use him as juice, but okay. You can't use him as juice because he wasn't juice. Damn. <laughs> well, then, good thing I didn't use him. <laughs> um, and basically, this is just a, a discussion between the three of us because we all have to come to a dis- uh, decision on who's going to be in these matches that I'm going to put out. Uh, no double duties. So we can't have somebody in like match one and be like, oh, okay. But they also are in match six as well. We can't do that. No double duties. Yeah. Okay? Stupid. All right. And the matches that we need to fill are going to be the first match is going to be the opener, which is going to be the ultimate NXT tag team championship match. The second one is going to be a six man, six man, no women in this one. Six-man ladder match. Then we're going to have just a women's match. Just a normal women's match. We can make it triple threat or fatal four-way, whatever we decide. The fourth one is going to be a men's grudge match. 
The fifth match will be the Ultimate NXT Women's Championship match. And then the main event, of course, will be the Ultimate NXT uh, Championship match. Okay. All right. Stipulations will be allowed. You know, maybe we shouldn't go stipulation heavy, though. It is the Ultimate NXT. And again, we can make these triple threat. We can make them fatal four ways. We can make them whatever we want. But we have to all come to a consensus on who should be in these matches. And I will write down oh, the matches as we cause fights. It, maybe hence, not. Why I'm do, hence why I'm doing it. <laughs> so for the opening contest, the Ultimate NXT Tag Team Championship match, who do we have? And I would like to open the floor and put in the revival. Beautiful. Yeah, I have the revival as well. Hashtag D I Y. So, oh, wait, so uh, is that how easy it is? We're, we all decide that the revival should be the first team in the match. Yep. I guess, yeah. Okay, so they're, oh, okay, well, there goes the fight. Okay. <laughs> revival of Dash Wilder right. and Scott Dawson. And you're saying DIY? Yep. No. No. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'll toss out Fish and O'Reilly. Yeah, that's what I got. Uh, see, I don't know about Fish and O'Reilly. I mean, I mean, it makes sense, but that—that's I mean, a match that I'd really want to see too. Revival versus Fish and O'Reilly. I think they'd have a great match. Now, in my booked match here, I have them only going for 10 minutes because of the way that my show was booked. But um, I you, mean, would have, you would have Fish and O'Reilly versus The Revival for 10 minutes? Yes. Because, this is why I banned you from NXT shows. Because this was the fourth match on my show. And the yeah. first match went 12 minutes. The second match went 15. The third match went 20. Then after it, I got a 15-minute match. Uh, sixth was 10 minutes, seven was 20, and eight was 15. So by the time this show is done, it's going to be like an hour and 50 minutes. I had to cut time somewhere, so that's where I cut the time. See, for me, I booked, well, I had only 14. Just that's why I, for context at home, they, they, they booked their own shows because I totally didn't tell them how this worked until like <laughs> two days ago. In case you're wondering, like, what the fuck do you mean they booked their own shows? Because I had no idea how we were doing this until, like, literally just either two days ago or right now. The only four teams I have written down are DIY, American Alpha, The Revival, and Fish and O'Reilly. And I booked it as a tournament where DIY would get American Alpha, The Revival would get Fish and O'Reilly in the first round. And then it would go on to DIY versus Fish and O'Reilly. Well, then, okay, I'm okay with The Revival versus Fish and O'Reilly, then. Okay. Shelby? I also did have DIY in the first opening match against KO and Sami Zayn, but that was a separate thing. Um, yeah, Revival and UE, I agree. Okay. Yep. All, right. All right. Revival versus Fish and O'Reilly for the ultimate. Now, do we think this needs like some kind of uh, like two out of three falls? No. Nothing? Just a straight falls. tag match? Okay. But I'd be okay with the straight tag for sure. Straight tag match. Okay. All right. All right, next up. Well, that was easier than I expected. Next up, I am going to have a caveat for this. All right, we're booking a six-man ladder match. Now, each of us have one non-negotiable, which means one of our guys gets into this match no matter what. We can't veto it, nothing. Each of, one of our guys gets in no matter what. So is this ladder match? This is just a ladder match. There's no we can title. say it's, we can say it's for you know hey you know what maybe we can say it's for the North American Championship. Fair enough. All right, so okay, all right, we just added that. Okay, it's for the North American Championship. And you know what, my my non-negotiable, I'm going to put him in here, and that is the Velveteen Dream. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with Velveteen. My non-negotiable yeah. is Johnny Gargano. Hmm. Who's mine? Are you sure about that? Yep. Okay. Johnny Gargano, it is. Hmm. 
tempted to throw him in. See, my North American Championship match was Nakamura versus Dream. But see, and I was leaning at Nakamura too, but then I went with um, Gargano because I realized we had booked Revival and Fish and O'Reilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go Champa. Champa. Yeah. Okay, so those are those are our non-negotiables. So they're in no matter what. So now we just need three others in this match. Who else says NXT Takeover? Who would be in a North American Championship match? We've got Gargano, Champ, Sami Zayn. I could go with Sami Zayn. I don't, man. But he was only on like what two takeovers though, really? Three. So he have to be on. Yeah, but like, was he really? <laughs> okay, what about what about Adrian Neville? Okay, I'd rather have Zayn on than Neville. Really? I mean, but we do have to fill three slots. So do we? But you can't. But again, there's a long list of talent we could be using other than. Neville here. I mean, there's Alistair Black. There's Andrade. There's um, maybe Black Andrade. I don't want tire. Black in a ladder match. Matt but... Riddle. I don't want Riddle in a ladder Ooh. match either. Um, <sighs> who am I thinking of here? The Keith Lee. Oh, I forgot about yeah. Keith Lee. I could be down with Keith Lee. Yeah, big man in the ladder match is always nice. Keith Lee. All right, we'll put in Keith Lee. Sure. All right, so we need two more. Did we land anything on Nakamura at all? I'm not against it. I don't know if Nakamura would fit best in a ladder match, but I mean, what I know about Bobby Roode. Uh, Bobby Roode's a world title man. Okay. Uh... <sighs> Shit. Be done. Um. I was thinking I was going to throw his name in in the grudge match area. Okay. Yeah, not a bad idea. Okay, Tyler Bate. No. Angel Garza. What? <laughs> Just throwing names now. <laughs> Damian Priest. Hmm. <laughs> But again, when you think ultimate takeover, well, okay, like, so we have so so we have two more spots right after. Mm -hmm. three, Plus, there's a whole other part of the show to be booked. Roderick Strock, Adam Cole, no way. Damn. Hear me uh, out on this one. I'm going to throw this name out. All right. I know he has. he's only been at, like, I think three takeovers, but he's also been in a ladder match, and he's been in a five-star ladder match. Lars Sullivan. I knew you were going to say Lars, and I'm down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's so, nice to have yeah. two big men in a ladder match, right? So it kind of makes sense. There yeah. needs to be one guaranteed he's not going to win, so we know that's Lars. <laughs> So we're okay with Lars Sullivan going in? Sure. Okay, yeah. yeah. Is there one more? One more. Oh, shit. Um, Hideo Tommy. Who? Hideo Tommy. Please leave. <laughs> Eric Young. Uh, I would feel better about EC3. He was only at one. In a ladder match. Yeah, but he was only at one takeover. Ricochet. Did he not have a second takeover? No, he was only at that one. Then they called him up. Mm, Ricochet would work, though. I'd be down with Ricochet. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right, Ricochet. All right. 
Ricoosh. Okay, all right, so that's our ladder match. The Velveteen Dream versus Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa versus Keith Lee versus Lars Sullivan versus Ricochet. Okay. All right. All right, next match here is just a uh, regular women's match, just, just like thrown in there, you know, something to break up the excitement after the ladder match that we'd have. So, but it's two women who personify NXT. So, who, who would we put in this match? Or it could be three or four, whoever. So, I'm going to read you mine. And mine okay. is kind of predictable, but it's Charlotte. Versus Becky, versus Sasha, versus Bailey. That's what I had as like my women's match, other than the women's title match. Normally, I wouldn't be against that, but seeing how we'd be coming off from a ladder match. Yeah, I think that's too much coming. Off. I think we we take two of them off. And I say we get, we we go old school, we go Brooklyn one with it, and we just have a classic Bailey versus Sasha. I was gonna say let's have a Bailey versus Sasha classic. I'd be okay with that. Bailey versus Sasha. Yeah. Sure. This is not causing the chaos that I was hoping. But... <laughs> hey, it's only halfway over. I think it's about that. All right, so now we have the men's grudge match. So we can have two or three. Again, now we can add some more people if we want, but this is just grudge match between – this is why I was asking, does does Nick really want to put in Gargano um, in the ladder match? Because I was like, you sure you want to put him in the ladder match? Like, but Because I was thinking maybe Gargano here against somebody, you know, but – no double duty. I uh, I got um, a false count anywhere match between McIntyre, Rusev, and uh, Killian Dane. See, for me, I have uh, either Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura or Samoa Joe versus Kevin Owens. How much reefer were you smoking when you made that match, Shelby? <laughs> it was going to be a 10-minute hard-hitting affair. And I was looking at, like, putting together matches that I hadn't seen or didn't think happened before. Pretty much every one of these matches at least never happened in NXT, as far as I know. What about, I'm going to take something from Nick here. What about Samoa Joe, hard-hitting guy, versus Mm. another hard-hitting guy, Pete Dunne? Oh, yes. Oh, please. See, I had, and are we, we're not including the NXT UK championship, right? No. Yeah. So I had Walter defending against Samoa Joe. Oh, oh. Oh, I like that too. I thought Walter and Samoa Joe Damn. would be a pretty good match. Do we, do we keep, do we keep Samoa Joe versus Pete Dunn single? Do we add somebody to the mix? Oh, Walter. <laughs> Samoa Joe versus Pete Dunn versus Walter. Beautiful. Do does it really need Walter though, or do we? Does, does it, it really need? need wait, 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 hold on. Does it need Walter or do we want Walter? We want does it Walter. Need Pete Dunn or do we want Pete Dunn? Oh, it needs Pete Dunn. I don't know. Think about Pete Dunn bending back fingers as Samoa Joe, and then like Walter picks them both up and like. Oh man, oh. Pete Dunn's so small compared to the other two, though. Oh come on, though, he's the like bruiser a shrimp. weight, dude. Yeah, he's wow, bruiser weight, bruiser weight. Oh <laughs> man, I already wrote down Joe versus Dunn because y'all gasped when I mentioned that. So like, I thought yeah, we're in Joe. There's the yeah. I think. We, but I'm we, just curious if we need to add anybody else to this grudge match. I don't think so. You think that that'd be a, a good affair? Oh man, bare knuckle, <laughs> just oh, oh man, damn it! Make it a strap match, and I'll be happy. Fire some a strap old. match. Ooh. Yeah, man, I always want. I want to see Pete Dunn in a strap match. I feel like that. I feel like there's something there with the fingers and the 
A you know, Samoan strap match? Is that what you're there saying? You go. Samoan strap match, yeah. Well, okay, Samoan strap match it is. Cool. Okay. All right, next up is we have to book the ultimate NXT Women's Championship match. I'm going to get some heat here, I think. Oh, God, this should be good. <laughs> Charlotte Flair versus Tony Storm. Okay. I got uh, Shayna Baszler versus Rhea Ripley. Ew. <laughs> what do you mean, ew? That's your woman he's talking about. <laughs> yes, but at the ultimate takeover in your book, and Shayna versus Rhea is just one on one. I. Mm-hmm. Um, <sighs> see, we already booked Bailey and Sasha, so there goes that right there. Yeah. So, and when it comes to like ultimate women's champion, I'm. I mean, Charlotte was great. You know, she had some great outings and everything, but I don't think ultimate women's champion. Okay. What that's about, just me. That's, uh, that's just what me. About, I just, you okay. know. Okay, I'll throw this one out there. Asuka versus Io Shirai. Asuka I'm okay with. Io? Uh, why, why not? Why not Asuka and Baszler? I could go for that. Because, like, it's one thing on the main roster, but in an NXT setting. I could setting, go for that. Oh, I could go for that. Yeah. All right, down boy. Because, <laughs> like, in the WWE main roster, you know, we, I think we may have seen that in tag matches and such, but I think in an NXT setting, that could maybe, that could possibly be something there. Yeah, I think so. Shelby. As long as Shayna Baszler beats that child, that's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Okay, so Oscar, I mean Oscar was good to be right. Oscar versus Shayna. All right, and finally for the ultimate NXT uh ultimate NXT world championship match. Who do we got? Adam Cole versus Bobby Roode. <sighs> I knew this was coming. <laughs> Adam Cole the battle versus of the Kevin end. Owens. Adam Cole versus Kevin Owens versus Nakamura. I'm down. Hmm. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Was was Nakamura oh no, we didn't add Nakamura into any other match, did we? Nope. Because we no. that's Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Straight up triple versus... threat. Oh wins. Okay. So I just want to mention here some names that didn't get added here. Andrade, not on our card. Uh Balor, not on the yeah. card. Um, strong. Didn't get in. Yeah. Um, Alistair Black, not in. Uh, no Becky Lynch. No Lynch. No Charlotte. No Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte didn't get in. Charlotte's not in. Um. No. Uh, no Io Shirai. No Rhea Ripley. No Sami Zayn, no Adrian Neville. Wasn't uh-huh. wasn't Neville only at one though? No, he was at two, he was in that remember Breeze uh Neville Zayn hit? Yeah, that was one. And was Neville lot, defended at the first takeover. Versus oh. um Oh damn, who was it? Tyson Kidd. Oh, okay. I, I could have swore he was at um, no Matt Riddle. We can get Riddle in here. Oh shit! We didn't. Oh god, we didn't get no way, Jose. Oh wow. Was he let go last year? Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I don't remember what happened to him. <laughs> they considered bringing him back for like a minute. Really? Yep. Yeah. Wow. How could we have forgotten No Way Jose? Now, hold on. We got to rework the whole card. Hold on. I think <laughs> we need to put No Way Jose in the main event, make it a fatal four way. Ah, uh, fair enough. Just for shits, I'd be down. <laughs> All right. So here's what we got. So in the opening contest, we're going to have the NXT Tag Team Championships, the Revival, Scott Dawson and uh, uh, Dash Wilder taking on uh, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Who would y'all pick to win? Um, fuck, see, I had mine ending in a no contest, but that's a whole Psych- different thing. Yeah. I'd have uh, the Revival take it. Yeah, I'd, I'd have the Revival because I like them. Fair not enough. that I don't, not that I don't like Fish and O'Reilly, but you know, if I had to pick between those two, uh, the revival. Yep. And then we have a North American Championship match here: the Velveteen Dream taking on Johnny Gargano, taking on Tommaso Ciampa, Keith Lee, yep. Lars Sullivan, the the shocker of the ones there, and Ricochet in a six man ladder match. Who would we uh, who would we pick to win there? Dream. Dream? Yeah. I picked Dream, yeah. Dream? Okay. Dream wins it. And in a uh, rematch from Brooklyn 1, uh, we have Bailey versus Sasha Banks in a women's contest here. Does uh, Bailey still get one over on Sasha, or does Sasha finally get her win back? Sasha gets a win back. Sasha gets a win back? Okay, so we're split. After help from the D-O-double-G Snoop Dogg. I really thought you were going road dog on that one for some no, reason. Cousin Snoop <laughs> comes in, helps out. Yeah, but does Takeover really need a celebrity involvement? No, but it's Sasha and Bailey, and do we really need that again? Well, yeah, actually, never mind. Yeah, we Sasha do because it's Ultimate Takeover. Sasha wins. Never mind. Sorry. And then in a Samoan strap match, we're gonna have Pete Dunn taking on Samoa Joe. Who are we picking? Joe. Joe. Damn, I, my heart wants to pick Pete Dunn, but I think if this was an actual match, yeah, they would go with Joe. So, and then for the ultimate NXT Women's Championship match, we have Oscar taking on Shayna Baszler. I think it's Shayna Shana. Baszler. Yeah, of course you'd pick Shayna. Yes, <laughs> I'd Asuka pick Oscar. Passes out. Just done. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Uh, I, I know where I know where Shelby's gonna go with this, so I'm just gonna go with the crowd and pick Shanna Baszler. <laughs> I said Oscar. Did you really? Yeah, I did. Oh. If it's NXT Oscar, I'm okay with it. If it's main roster Oscar, then definitely Baszler. <laughs> All right, then I'm Y'all gonna go suck. And in the main event for the Ultimate NXT Championship, we have Adam Cole. Versus Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kevin Owens. Adam Cole, baby. Adam Cole. Why not Nakamura? Because it's Adam fucking Cole. It's Adam Cole. But why not Nakamura? But it's Adam Cole. But it's It's Nakamura. But did you hear the streets of Toronto at the night of TakeOver 2? Blocks and blocks away from No, because I don't fucking live in Toronto. Okay, you can yell Adam Okay, hold on. So you can yell Adam Cole right up front of the arena and four or five blocks away, somebody's yelling baby back to the crowd. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. It's a good night. It's a good night. All right, so y'all pick Adam Cole. I pick Shinsuke Nakamura. There was also oh, and another name that didn't get picked that was mentioned was uh, Bobby Roode. Get Forget picked. no way, Jose. <laughs> and no way, Jose. Nah, nah, nah. All right, so that's our ultimate NXT takeover card there. And um, before we get into the uh, sports list of the week here, don't forget to head on over to repsports.com where you can pick up some Broken Arrow pre-workout powder also some hyper sleep to get you down from that ultimate workout there and also some raise energy drink 
to get you through that workout. And if you go over there right now to repsports.com and use my checkout code artist, you're going to save 15% off of everything. Most places only give you 10%, but me, I'm the artist V1. I'm going to give you 15% because that's how I roll, baby. So head on over to hot repsports.com. Dang. Yeah, hot damn it, indeed. So head on over to repsports.com, use my checkout code artist, and save 15%. Okay, so um, for the sports list of the week, uh, I got the help of old Uncle Dave again. Oh. <laughs> but I, I think this one's going to be a little bit more easier to deal with. It is the top 10 worst WrestleMania matches in history, according to Dave Meltzer. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Okay. So Let's... I think this one's mainly just going to be a, a agree or disagree type of list here. So coming in at number 10 with a negative one and a half stars is uh, this is the second time this match has shown up on our sports store list of the week here. And that is the WrestleMania 14 tag team battle Royal. Oh man. Really? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think, I, I, again, I don't think this match, is, is all that bad i mean i i've always enjoyed watching this match i mean i mean come on when you have teams like steve blackman and flash funk in here come on yeah. <laughs> and like teams like los bariquas los bariquas hell yeah oh hell yeah you know plus you got plus you got a pre too cool uh scott taylor and brian christopher too much the new midnight the new midnight express hell yeah the it's God was horrible. I disagree. Yeah, maybe not negative one and a half stars. Terrible, but you know, maybe yeah. one star. Terrible. <clears throat> yeah, uh, one star. <laughs> coming in at number nine, at negative two stars, is going to be Hulk Hogan versus Sid Justice from WrestleMania Eight. Oh, with the... <laughs> <laughs> a botched Boring. finish. <laughs> I take it you to agree with this one. Yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'd say it's probably up there for sure. <laughs> Nick really likes this one. Nick's dead. <laughs> Last week he was hating Dave Meltzer. This week he finds it hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this, this one, I didn't really remember that happened and I'm a big Jake Roberts fan, but this one with negative two stars, Rick Rude versus Jake Roberts from WrestleMania four. Well, that's when Rick Rude had, uh, Jake's wife's, uh, wife on his pants. <laughs> In the WWE championship tournament? I don't think so. Yeah, they were... Rick Rude had he was messing with Jake Roberts and he put Jake Roberts' his wife on his on his but not at and... WrestleMania four. Well, well, damn! Just for that factor alone, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> this one this one actually came as a shock to me because uh, of the historic factor to it. I, I'm actually amazed with this one, but. Coming in at number seven is Wendy Richter versus Leonie Kai at WrestleMania 1. Negative two stars. Wow. I mean, I understand that women's wrestling was not all it's cracked up to be back in the, you know, the late 80s or mid 80s. You also have to take into account what it was in the 80s, so I disagree with that. You know, but this was the first WrestleMania. This is probably one of the most historic women's matches here because you had uh, Cindy Lauper involved. Um, Ula. Yeah, I yeah, Leanne Kai with the fabulous Mula, yeah, yeah. So, but to be fair, I've never actually watched the match. I just know the historical significance to it. So I probably know either. the match. I could... had, I had a set of WrestleManias on VHS. I still have actually up to thirteen. I think I watched one through five. I don't remember much of that match except for like the Cindy Lauper stuff. That's so maybe it does belong. Bad rating. Yeah, maybe, maybe the match is the drizzling shits, and you know we just don't know. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Okay. All right. All right. Coming in at number six is the Natural Disasters versus Money Inc. at WrestleMania Eight. Negative two stars. <laughs> Anybody? Who got paid for who and what? 
in that match because that's all I can think when I think one of the who got paid. Uh, let's see what it says here. At WrestleMania 8, the Natural Disasters challenged Tag Team Champions Money, Inc. in a match that looked like it was going to be exciting, but sadly it was not. Each of the wrestlers <laughs> had weak performances, especially Typhoon and Earthquake, so it is no wonder Dave Meltzer rated this match negative two stars. Also, the match had an inadequate finish as the Natural Disasters won by countout. Okay, yeah. No, I, I do remember seeing that. It was not great. <laughs> Definitely At doesn't all. sound like a match that you should go watch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, coming in at number five is Shelby's favorite wrestler in Sable versus oh, Tori at WrestleMania 15. Negative two oh, stars. God. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. But... but it's Sable, man. All the all the girls want to be here, and all the men want her. But the Patriot. But the what? What is the Patriot? I really see. Oh, but the, when he wanted to pull Kevin Dunn over the table, when Uncle Corny wanted to pull Kevin Dunn over the table oh, because they wanted to talk the, about the Sable T-shirt spot. spot. Yeah. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, both Sable and Tori didn't have good wrestling skills, and therefore the match was very basic. The bout lasted just over five minutes. Ended after the powerful Nicole Bass attacked Tori and Sable seized the moment to win. Oh. It went about five minutes too long. <laughs> Are you like trying to like try out to be like Cornette's co-host or some shit? Is that what you're using this for? Because I can guarantee you he's never going to hear this. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. And he'd probably have a few harsh words for all of us if he did. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one, Lars Sullivan. <laughs> yeah, motherfuckers put Lars Sullivan in a fantasy match. Motherfuckers, <laughs> motherfuckers don't know how to book shit. <laughs> He'd probably be more like, "Who the fuck is Lars Sullivan?" <laughs> yeah, that, that probably it too. <laughs> <laughs> is that the guy who did the gay stuff with the gay people? It... <laughs> That'd be about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this match actually kind of surprised me. Like, I, I you know. Before I tell you what the match is, like, I, I mean, I'll admit, like, it's not one of Jake's best, but, like, I didn't think it was negative three star bad. But uh, coming in at number four, Jake Roberts versus Andre the Giant, uh, negative three stars from WrestleMania 5. Hmm. With Boy, That's the one with Big John Stud. Uh, as the, that's a lot as later in Andre's career, too, right? Yeah, but like still, I didn't think it was negative three star bad. I yeah. wouldn't say negative three star bad, but I mean. Uh, Andre the Giant barely moved for the entire match, which was the main reason why it was so boring. In the end, Roberts won by disqualification due to Andre choking stud. Does anybody want the peanut? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing a bad finish can ruin a match too. Yeah. Right? Like. And here's a match I don't even remember fucking happening. Coming in at number three is the fabulous Rougeau brothers taking on the Bushwhackers at WrestleMania 5, negative four stars. Ew. <laughs> I didn't even know this match happened. Yeah, neither did I. You know, uh, all matches so far have been like pre 2000s. Well, the all these what? What's that? What'd you say? All these matches have been what? Pre 2000s, like before the 2000s? Uh, except for the tag team battle royal. No, no, that was, oh, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. That was 98. What the fuck am I talking about? Yeah. Yep. And Sable and Tori was 99. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, spoiler alert, they're all pre th pre 2000. <laughs> really? Yeah. And this list is recent? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about recent. I just click them. Like within the last few years. Let me see. Let me yeah, see. it is. Uh, published <laughs> April 10th, 2021. Yep. Wow. That's, that's interesting. Okay. And what it says about the Bushwhackers and Fabulous Rousseau's, uh, at the time, the Bushwhackers were one of the worst teams on the roster. And that <laughs> night... 
that was <laughs> evident after their abysmal performance. The fabulous Rougeau brothers were not good were not in good shape either. I've no. heard phenomenal things about the sheep herders. Have either of you ever seen any footage of them? <sighs> not I've always know. heard that they were like this brutal fucking team in like yeah. New Zealand, but like I have never seen anything from them in New Zealand. Neither yeah, I. like they were. I think they were in the NWA too. I don't know who they worked for, but like the WWE just turned them into the Bushwhackers, which was like a watered down version of what their gimmick was, right? But I've heard they had some brawls and like bloody matches and all kinds of stuff. I've just I've never seen it. Hmm. Uh, the most heelish I've ever seen them was when they turned heel on Family Matters. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody ever see that episode of Family Matters? <laughs> oh, yeah. Shall we? No, I haven't. There's an I, episode of I, There's I, an episode of Family so. Matters where like these wrestlers are in town and they apparently know Carl and Carl knows them and they're gonna wrestle the Bushwhackers and they're <laughs> like a heel team. So, yeah. and, but the one thing the Bushwhackers hate are cops. So. Some Steve comes up with some sleepy juice and <laughs> accidentally gives it to the wrestlers. So now that they're passed out, Carl and Steve have to wrestle the match. So they basically tell you like, Hey, wrestling, wrestling, you know, worked, you know? So as Steve, Steve is talking to the bushwhackers in the ring, they're just like, yeah, you know, we're just filling in for our friends. You know, my friend over there, he's a cop. And they're like, cops, we hate cops. And then they just fucking heal out. And just almost beat the shit out of yep. Steve and Carl. It, it's, <laughs> it's fucking great if you ever get a chance to find it. it, it it's it's good. That's like the most heel I've ever seen the Bushwhackers. No shit, eh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Coming at number two, which uh, when, when I was researching this list, because uh, like I always tell you, I, I look at these lists beforehand just to know what I'm getting myself into. This one, I was kind of shocked, but also kind of makes sense, too, once I read, like, the little paragraph that was under it. Number two, negative four stars. Andre the Giant versus Hulk Hogan from WrestleMania 3. Not the rematch uh, at WrestleMania 4, but WrestleMania 3. Yeah, I heard about this, and I think I heard the write-up, but you can read it before I say anything. Yeah. Uh, let's see. At WrestleMania 3, Hulk Hogan said, uh, uh, Obviously, this match was not very good in a technical sense, but it had good points, so it's very surprising that it received such a bad rating. Despite the strong criticism, many fans love this match. Today, many remember it as one of the greatest moments in WWE history. And I think that's what you gotta remember about this match, and that's why it can't possibly be Minus four stars. I mean, it was the biggest draw in the company's history up to that point. It was draw. the biggest match in up to the the in that point up to that company up to the company's history. Like uh, to 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 you know put that at number two of the worst WrestleMania matches of all time, and then like not have any from post two thousands. Like yeah, come on now. That's, that's, that's a bit much. Yeah. Like I, I see it from both ends. I can see why he, uh, why he gave it negative four stars. But yeah, I get what you're saying too. Where the the, the historical, historical the historical impact of that match, you kind of have to take point. You have to get well. I wouldn't say take points off, but I guess you have to give points to it in this case. Yeah. Since it's at negative four stars. So uh, I, I, I get where he's going with it because you know he's also a critic. So, you, you know, you can't just judge it by historical, you know, reference. You know, he's a critic, so he has to judge it for technical sense. But um, he's judging it in a sense of a Young Bucks versus Kenny Omega type match. And matches were worked so much differently back then. They really were. And honestly, I think but sometimes... he, But you got to understand, he, he's not back when he was reviewing, because he's been doing this. Like, you got to understand, he reviewed... He's Andre been doing versus this Hogan since before we were born. Exactly. So. He reviewed Andre yeah. versus Hogan when he could compare it to something like uh, a Hogan versus or, or a Savage versus Steamboat. He could compare it yeah. to something like that. It's not like he like viewed Andre versus Hogan yesterday and then he watched Young Bucks versus Omega and Page. 
I know. I just to to even make that comparison is just I don't know. I I disagree with it one hundred percent. Okay, fair enough. All right, and coming in at number one, any, any guesses as to what number one could be? Is it Bundy oh, yeah. versus S.T. Jones? Bundy versus S.T. Jones is your guess. Shelby, any guesses as to what number one could be? Oh man. And it's pre two thousand. Pre two thousand. Uh, I'll even tell you, it's it's, it's pre WrestleMania ten. Pre WrestleMania ten. It's in the first ten WrestleMania, first nine WrestleManias. Oh, or Undertaker versus Johnny Giant Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good shout right there. Oh man, I I I. Let's go check I out. As much of those WrestleManias as I have, like the later ones, especially WrestleMania like eleven to uh, twenty two, so I I couldn't even fathom a guess to be honest with you. All right, unless coming it's Hulk at... Hogan versus Andre from WrestleMania four. Coming in at number one at negative five stars, and that is a contest from WrestleMania two. Mm. It is. Roddy Piper versus Mr. T. <laughs> really? Yeah. Fair yeah. Enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. The boxing match between Mr. T and Roddy Piper was just terrible. They both failed in their attempt to look like <laughs> boxers, and they didn't look <laughs> good at all. Were boxers. <laughs> Unorthodox punches, stupid selling, and very predictable outcome. With Mr. T yep. winning by disqualification, this match should have never happened, at least not at WrestleMania. No. Agreed. <laughs> All right. Damn so dirty that... Dave had me agreeing with. <laughs> <laughs> I know once I was like looking for the list this week and I saw uh, top worst WrestleMania match according to Dave Meltzer. I was like, okay, I gotta look at this, see if it's any good. So, um, see if it's gonna be like last week. I was like, I gotta do this one. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So. Uh, that was everything except for now. We just got to do the vintage pick of the week here, and um, I guess uh, I don't really, I don't, I didn't really have a vintage pick of the week picked out. I guess my vintage pick of the week would be a um, the, Mojo Raleigh winning the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Mm-hmm. That that is my vintage pick of the week because Mojo, if you're listening out there, we'll miss you, buddy. Mine no, would no. be the street flight from King of the Ring 2001 for Angle versus Shane McMahon. Oh, that was a good one. Mm. I recently watched SummerSlam 94, oh, and awesome. my pick is going to be um, Diesel defending the Intercontinental Championship against Razor Ramon. This match surprised me, actually, a lot. So I really enjoyed the spot uh, where Earl Hebner jumped in front of the um, the ring post that I think Diesel or Sean had opened up, taking the, the cover off of. He jumped in front of it so that Diesel can throw Scott Hall into it. And then uh, after Sean distracted him, Diesel did it anyway. <laughs> so it was a good match. You missed what I said. You're like, I recently watched SummerSlam 94. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it was that bad of a show? No, I, I mean, other than the main Unexpected event, I couldn't tell you another match from that show. Well, uh, yeah, you can. We were talking about this one recently, the Steel Cage match. Oh, yeah, duh. I forgot about that. Yeah, which I agree, and I think the reason why it was so bad was Brett looked gassed like five or ten minutes in. Well, I told you why. And sunny it lasted days. 15 minutes longer than it should have been. Oh, sunny days. Sunny days. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for those of you wondering, uh, there's the long-standing rumor that Brett got it on with Sonny, a.k.a. Tammy Sitch. So uh, Shelby came to us and was just like, oh, I heard that Brett had strep throat during the, the cage match with Owen Hart at SummerSlam 94. I wonder if that's true. And I was like, it's not true. It's, he just had a sore throat from screaming, oh, God, Sonny, yes! You know, so that's- <laughs> Wouldn't it be Tammy? I would assume he would say Sonny. Yeah, why not? Okay, fair enough. You know, I, I would assume. <laughs> yeah. 
I wonder if he sang the Sesame Street song as he was doing it. Sunny days. Thank <laughs> 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 oh boy. Oh my god. Uh, man, you know uh Bret Hart oh no, I did that one to y'all already. Never mind. I was gonna I was gonna make a kick in the head joke by Bret Hart, but I forgot I did that one already. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. There yeah. yeah, I'll rework something I did last week. You know, I bought a uh a best of page DVD, but when I got it it was just her banging two guys. Good one. <laughs> Good one. Or here, here, you here's one. You have a page? Do what? You bought a DVD of a page? No. <laughs> no, here, here, here's one. Here's a good one. Um, I went to a uh, Psycho Sid signing. I got thrown out though. Apparently, he won't sign scissors. <laughs> I was so. I was watching. Okay. So before this, I was watching WrestleMania 13 because I was listening to uh, something to wrestle with where they talked about WrestleMania 13. Did you realize that there's a sign at WrestleMania 13 and it's a pair of scissors? And on one side of the scissors, it says Sid. And on the other side, it says Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> and like somebody went hardcore with these two and they actually like move so you can cut. <laughs> <laughs> incredible that's great <laughs> that is great oh my god like i go to the autograph rooms and such and somebody was, had a psycho sid autograph and that, i posted that in there i was just like oh, i got thrown out of a psycho sid a signing one time apparently he doesn't sign scissors <laughs> we're just like wow i wonder if anybody's actually done that <laughs> taking scissors to him to sign how are you doing, Mr. Sid? It's an honor to meet you. Can you sign these? And just whips out a pair of scissors. Just starts, He just starts crying. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This signing is over. This signing is over. Or, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I went and met Terry Funk. And, uh, um, I said something that offended him, so he punched me right in my eye! My eye! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> now I have a black eye that's going to last on my eye forever! Forever! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm terrible. Terrible. Somebody Fair was, enough. uh, Selling a picture of Kamala for uh forty five bucks, which I was like, man, that's a good deal, man. I'd amputate both my feet for that. Oh, <laughs> wow! What? Too soon? Damn! Damn! <laughs> or um, what? What is the other ones I usually see? Like they had a uh another page, uh autograph, and it yeah. was like um. Oh god, which one was it? It was her like standing on the corner, and I was like, "Man, that's a man, that's a nice looking page." But they wanted two hundred dollars for that, man. And people in the room were just like all over it, man. They started bidding on it like mad fire, man. I mean, like they were breaking their necks to get to this. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> put a black light on that. Black. What'd you <laughs> say? Oh wait, now I got the joke. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I make these horrible jokes in these rooms all the time. Like there was one of a uh, Hulk Hogan and Sting. It was an autograph, and it was Sting standing in the ring. I think at like Slambury 2000, and like it was Hulk Hogan extending his hand to Sting. And I wrote in there, I was just like, I don't like the way he's looking at that black jacket. Wow. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> give me that one. Come brother on, brother T. I just that just made me think of him calling Titus brother T. <sighs> brother T. <laughs> well, that's true, brother T. I'll tell you something, dude. Uh, no, <sighs> I heard he got booed a lot at WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, apparently. And that's the just... um, 
Oh, uh, the other horrible one. Oh, yeah, the, the one guy I go to at Dan at Sky High Signatures and Memorabilia, where you can get some great autographs at. Uh, hashtag not sponsored. Um, he had a signed Chris Benoit magazine, a raw magazine, which I was like, damn, if I, if I had the 350 to drop on that, I would love to have that. You know, I eventually just wrote in the room, and I was like, man, I'd kill to have that. Oh. <laughs> And you got you all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still, people still get so sore about that too. Oh my god! I was in which one was it? Because I go to two rooms. One is signed by superstars, and one is sky high signatures and memorabilia. I think it was. I think it was sky high. And one night, I made the same jokes. I made the like, you know, I'd kill to have that. Ha ha ha! Very funny, me. And uh, like one guy, he kind of just like. He wasn't like angry about it, but he was just like, uh, I don't get it. I was like, kill to have it, you know, Chris Benoit killed his family, you know, blah blah blah. And he was like, he didn't kill his family though. And I was just like, oh, okay, you know, like I was just like, all right, everybody. I was like, okay, everybody has their own opinion. He was like, well, Kevin Sullivan did. He's a Satanist, and this guy went into like what? a tirade about how Kevin Sullivan did it because he's a Satanist, and how he just. Oh, oh, everybody! Th- yeah, dude, this guy just started dropping what signs. The actual fuck. Yeah, to the point where I was just like, I'm just gonna let him go because, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch this one. Well, no. you're not gonna win it, so there's really no yeah, point. exactly. Like, I'm like, it wasn't even like a question of winning. It's just the fact that like I started it as a joke. Like, yeah. oh, I kill to have that Crispin Wall piece, ha ha ha. And he's just like, and he just took it in a totally different direction. <laughs> you know? oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I was just trying to make it fucking funny, like, yeah, you know, like the Kamala one and shit. You know, like, I'd kill to have that, huh? Or that Magnum TA, I'd wreck my motorcycle for that, huh? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> poor Magnum, poor Magnum. But all right, I think uh, I think that's all we got for you here tonight, and. There is the bell, so that means that signifies the end of the three-way dance here. Um, oh, no. Oh, that's a premature bell ring there, ref, because we actually have some questions to answer. I forgot oh, about wow. them. Yeah, I forgot about them. Um, we've been sitting here bullshitting for a second here, so let me pull up the two questions that we have. Oh, there's two. I only knew of one. <laughs> Uh, and it was the one that you we were yeah. talking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let me pull them up here because I didn't bring my phone down here to pull them up. So da, 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 da. pull that. Oops. All right. All right, computer. Work with me here. I forgot about the question. So all right, shitty ref, you ring the bell too soon. <laughs> Damn it, Jack. Don't. <laughs> Damn it, Mike Kyoto. Um. Hey, Mike uh, Kyoto. I like my kill. Okay. John Cohen and his stupid son. And people listening, uh, if you want, you know, leave some questions in the comments down below for the next episode here. So the first question here actually comes from the person that we titled, or I titled the episode after last week, Jordan. He actually leaves a funny question here, and that is, what is the biggest crap you have ever taken in your life? I don't know how to answer this question. What do you mean you don't know how to answer it? Well, what it is... Came, it came after a long bout of constipation, and it weighed approximately seven pounds. Okay, my, my follow-up question to that is, how do you know how much it weighed? I was in the hospital. At the time. Oh, okay. So I'm like, how do you know how much it weighed? What, do you have a shit scale at home or something? <laughs> Uh, biggest crap I've ever taken in my life. Um, oh God, I don't, man, because I've had some doozies before, man. Like, I have, man. I have had some doozies of a shits. Um, like I don't think I can just single out one, man. <laughs> Especially like, well, like recently in the last few years, man. When like diarrhea hits, oh, dude. Yeah. Shelby? Uh, 
Cleveland steamer. On who? <laughs> On the toilet. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> All right. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> This guy <laughs> trolled us for like a, for like one week to the point where I named an episode "Fuck Jordan" after him. He actually comes back with a funny question, and that's the answer you're going to give him. I don't know. How do you answer this question? <laughs> I hell if I know. The way we just answered it. <laughs> Five pounds. Okay, I, I guess. All right. <laughs> All right, and Andrew left us a question as well, and that is, what are your picks? for the top three iconic wrestling shirt designs of the last 20 years. I think don't, Austin, all, don't all answer at once now. Hold on. Slow down now. I think Austin 316 has to be on there. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't the last 20 years, though. Uh, oh, I. Oh, we know what you got. 2001. So I'm going to say. Uh, the yes, I would rather put. I would put no over yes. Well, I mean, the KO mania, KO mania. Wait a minute, you would put what over yes? The no shirt over the yes shirt. Oh, oh okay. Uh, most iconic wrestling shirt design. I think I, it ain't showing off if you back it up. Yeah, that was an okay one, but like, I don't know. I, 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 Andrew, I don't, I don't really have an answer for this because I mainly just, I, I buy shirt designs that from people that I like, and like I whittle it down to somebody I like, and then I buy the best one they have. Yeah, you know, so I can't, I can't really, you know, I can't really, I can't really say. Like, I can't say, like, well, The Undertaker had a great shirt because I never bought a shirt. I can't say a specific. My most sought after would have to be the Nexus, the original Nexus shirt. Just the solid yellow with the black hand. Fancy it. I, I mean, probably my most sought after. I would like a, a Gold Dust shirt that says, I will shatter your dreams because I had one and I wore the fuck out of it. So I would like another one. <laughs> I do. I, I wore this shirt so much, man. Cause it yeah. says on the front, I will shatter your dreams on the back. It says shattered dreams productions and shit. Yeah. I fucking, I wore the fuck out of this shirt. So like, if I could ever get like another one again, Oh my God, that'd be so great. Yeah. You know, and probably recently, like I'd probably say the, the, uh, the Brody Lee Memorial shirt. Was did, really yeah, cool. that is a cool shirt. I bought that one. So that was really good. And I guess uh, the You Cannot Kill David Arquette shirt. There we go. Those are my three. <laughs> I've got, uh, I like uh, Lisa Ingo Bernabalas del Jericho. I've got that one. The which one? Lisa Ingo Bernabalas del Jericho. Can somebody hit the SAP button on him? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's all literally I, all, what it says. All I thought was Jericho. Right. Lista Ingo Bernable del Jericho. And it's got a little clipboard. It's a New Japan shirt. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's another piece of like memorabilia I wouldn't mind having because for a while WWE used to sell actual list of Jerichos. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, and I I kind of wanted one, and never bought one. So that, like that's something I wouldn't mind having. Yeah, they're really like thirty bucks. You said yeah. that Austin three sixteen doesn't count, but they still sell that shirt. Okay, where? <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, but this shirt originally came out in ninety seven. Yeah, but they still sell it, and it's still, like, the hottest-selling piece of merchandise they sell. Okay, I mean this in the nicest way I can say it. Fuck you. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair <laughs> I mean, well, fuck, I mean, like, we're, we're having a hard time with this question anyway, so I guess, like, fuck, if you want to go with Austin 316, go with Austin 316. Just, yeah. You know. <laughs>
I'm having a hard enough time with this question anyway. I mean, I knew we were going to have a problem with this question the second I re- read it. I knew we were going to have an easier time with the shit question than, w- than with this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, like, once I read Top Iconic Wrestling Shirt Design of the last 20 years, my brain froze. I'm like, ugh. Yeah, I, I, I don't... T-shirts don't sell like they used to, I don't think. Like, especially when you have, like, your Austin 316, your Hulkamania shirts and, and all that, right? Like, hot I don't Rod. Know, like, hot Rod, another one. And you know, you get the odd one where, like, I think the yes one or the no one, whichever one you want to say. Yeah. I think they sold a lot, but, like, I don't think... I mean, I got a Bobby Roode one, the, the glorious one. I really like that one, and I got the... <laughs> honestly, my favorite shirt I've ever bought from WWE was the Mower of Lawn shirt. I fucking love that shirt so much. You bought the Mower of Lawn shirt? Are you shitting me? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did because I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. And I wear it out. People are like, what the hell is that? Mower of Lawn, chair of wheels. <laughs> mower of Lawn, chair of wheels. I, I was of... hoping they'd bring out a chair of wheels one, but they never did. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Now I mean they don't come out with the shirts like they used to and shit, man. Like, like now it's like they come out with like one shirt every fiscal year for like, unless they're like extremely popular, you know, unless you got like your Roman Reigns or your John Cena's and shit, you know. But like, like somebody like Dexter Loomis, who I like, I bought his shirt, you know. He had two shirts out. Now he only, now he's only got one, you know. You know, but like or somebody like Charlotte Flair, her last two shirts. I'm just like, I, I don't, I don't want, I don't want these. You know, you could probably make a case for Cena having the top three shirts, top three iconic. Is in if you're saying iconic, most sold and most recognizable in the last twenty years, you could probably make a case for him having all three. Really, mm-hmm. yeah, possibly, yeah. You know, even though he just rips off other brands and puts it on his, you know, <laughs> fruity pebbles. <laughs> no, like you had the Paps blue ribbon shirt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one too. Yeah, and uh, I think there's like John the, Deere, John Deere, and then plus he had the the Nintendo. Well, shirt. John Deere makes a bit of sense, right? The Nintendo shirt bothered me. Or the eight bit shirt, as they would technically refer to it as. Uh, yeah. Why did the why did the eight bit one bother you? Because I was overseen at that time. I think we were all overseen at that time. Yeah, I just I, I actually I, own a John Cena shirt. It's from when he was doing Word Life. See, oh, I, nice! The Word Life one I like. The, yeah, the classic WWF logo. Yep, that's the one I have. Yeah, I like that one. That's what I have. It's it's buried like in a box somewhere, but I have it. Like when I went to my very first um uh live event, um they didn't have like I was at a Raw event, which was weird on top of all that because he went on Raw at the time. Um, like I bought the um the John Cena shirt and the um the Matt Hardy necklace, and then ironically when he was on Raw, I went to a SmackDown event and bought the Word Life necklace. Good. But I don't know where the necklace went. Like the chain? Yeah, it was like the chain. And then like the the pendant was like the the lock he used to have around his neck. But it was like right towards the end of him doing the word life shit. Because, you know, here's a nice little fun fact for you wrestling fans who are still listening. Um, Smackdown, Here Comes the Pain, that video game. The next one, before they decided to be Smackdown versus Raw... The next one was actually supposed to be SmackDown Word Life. Really? That was going to be the next one. Sense. Yeah. And John Cena was going to be the cover boy and shit like that. It was going to be yeah. SmackDown Word Life. And then uh, then they decided to, re- you know, they decided to redesign it and become, you know, SmackDown versus Raw. That's too bad that it had such an impact on his career. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not being on that cover. <laughs> I know. Yeah, he could have went off and been a big star. Yeah. <laughs> Damn shame. 
You know, he'd probably be making movies and such and shit by now. You know? Yeah, he'd probably be worth a couple million dollars at least. Oh, yeah. It's said to be in a Fast and Furious movie. Part of the Suicide Squad. <laughs> like, word life. Word life. Thugonomics. That's one thing that bothered me about John Cena is that he's he's never released another album. You know, I got made fun of so much when I bought that fucking album. Why? Because people at school were like, wrestling's fake. And John Cena sucks. <laughs> and then you're <laughs> like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I mean, I was in like grade seven or eight when that album came out. <laughs> So and what you watch movies because of real spoiler yeah. alert Toby Maguire not really Spider Man <laughs> right <laughs> that's always my go to when people are just like you know wrestling's fake right and I'm like hey you can watch movies because of real what spoiler alert Toby Maguire not really Spider Man <laughs> it's always my go to <laughs> that's a good one I like that. Like, I, I can't take full credit for all that. There's that meme of Stephanie McMahon with that fucking goofy fucking face saying, oh, and you watch movies, why? Because they're real? That yeah. that part comes from the meme, but I always add the, like, oh, spoiler alert, yeah, yeah. Tobey Maguire, not really Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, I think that is the real bell now. And uh, we can call an end to the three-way dance. So if you've listened this far, remember, for the next episode, leave some questions in the comments down below. Me, Shubs, and Nick here will answer them on the next episode. What are one of you eating? Are one of you eating? Nope. Oh, I could have swore I heard, like, chips crunching or some shit. That's what, like, what, 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 what are you eating? Um, <laughs> so I was like, what the shit, man? Wait till we're done. Um, so, yeah, leave some questions in the comments down below. And we'll answer them on the next episode. Next episode, uh, I don't. I, I maybe maybe we should book the ultimate WrestleMania next week. Is it going to be the same format of this as this week? Well, not six matches, but well, but same idea where like maybe who knows? Are you going to let us know beforehand this time so I don't write a eight match maybe, show? Who knows? <laughs> maybe who knows? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, we're going to use the original format that I sent you with the social security numbers and the oh, color of the shirt. Yeah, yeah. We're, going to, yeah. we're going to use that format. We're Perfect. Gonna... I just need to give some of these guys a call and figure out what their social security <laughs> numbers are. You don't need the whole number. You just need the last two, fucker. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure that'll make it less weird when I call them asking for the last <laughs> two digits of their social security numbers. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you curious, real quick, uh, Shelby was like, how are we doing this fantasy booking thing? And I came up with like the most convoluted way to do this fantasy booking thing. This is the and first time you said this. Steiner <laughs> yeah, that was for the draft lottery. I came up with that shit. Yeah. And Nick actually thought it was real. <laughs> <laughs> Nick was like, that's a weird way they're doing the draft lottery. I was like, it's not really how they're doing it. Like, Honestly, with them, it wouldn't be too surprising, though. Yeah, yeah. So, until the next episode of the Three-Way Dance, I'm Yars Version 1, and for Shubs and Nick, we will see you on the next one. Be breezy.